Hi everyone and welcome to my channel Fierce and Pretty. I'm Hanni. I'm a tarot enthusiast from Finland and I thought I'd show you my collection so far. These teeny tiny cards I, I used to create these study boards for the major arcana and then also for the minors. So let's just jump into my collections. I'll start with the favorite ones and I think my current favorite deck is the Llewellyn Tarot. I did edge it. All of my edging edgings are and pictures can be found on my on my Instagram account, Fears and Pretty. I hear many people complaining about the Llewellyn card stuff, but I actually like these Llewellyn cards. I like how the, the way they riffle suffle. Many of you of course know this deck, so I'll just show a few few of my favorite cards quickly. There are the Nine of Cups. The star. I like the lighting in this one. The Hankman. And also one, one of my other favorites is a Llewellyn printed deck. It's the Anna K Tarot, but I have the Llewellyn version. I edged mine in black. I have been thinking about getting the, the original ind independent Anna K, but still I'm a bit iffy with the different colored borders on the indie version. But here are a few of my favorite cards in the and okay, Ace of Rods, Eight of Swords, and I really like the Three of Swords. And the same with this one as with the Llewellyn Tarot. I like how the shop is. And I actually like the guidebook also. Continuing with the favorite decks, actually this the Star Star Child Akashic Tarot. I just I actually bought it for one card, and it it totally surprised me. I didn't expect to you know, first of all as a tarot beginner I was uh, really new to tarot when I got it, so I thought that it would be really hard for me to to read and and to connect and understand because I, I was just getting used to with the standard right, right away smith images and this is totally different but to my complete surprise I've, I've been able to read it and really really nice readings it's surprised me a lot even though the deck is huge I still do riffle shuffle it I just divide it in two files and then riffle shuffle these two piles and then combine it all. The matte gilding is beautiful and also the feeling on the cards. Just show quickly my few of my favorite images on this deck. The star seed and even though this isn't particularly my style and, and a deck that I thought I would would love as much, but I, I really do. It's the star seed, the fool. And this was the card, the death card in this deck, transformation, that pulled me into this deck as a Scorpio and as a huge, huge fan of the ancient Egypt. This was just calling me, but it ended up liking and using the deck a lot. Still thinking about getting the moon child maybe one day. I do have the oracle decks from Daniel Noel, but let's see if the moon child comes one day also. Then off to Tarot Ill Illuminati. This was my quite a, one of the first purchases after the Rider Waite Smith decks and because it's really standard imagery 
done totally differently it's quite easy to start to study and explore in another way and I bought the big book that you can buy separately for this deck and still studying on that it's a really nice book but there's a lot to read actually this deck isn't totally re reversible because of the backings you see the greens and the, the blue shades but I don't mind and yet again I've edged mine in, in black I love edging decks to show a few images again two swords the empress this deck, uh, deck is a bit different of most of the other decks that I do have because it's the, the artwork is so detailed you really need to look into it and take your time with this deck but I really like it and again shuffles like a dream and then comes a de deck that probably everybody knows uh, The Deviant Moon by Patrick Valenza I have the borderless edition and I love it I also bought the book The Deviant Moon by Patrick Valenza book it's huge it's heavy and it is amazing still haven't had time to study it properly but I do have it and these I etched too with black yeah but everybody definitely knows this deck so amazing and also with this virtual shuffling is great then off to the right away smith decks I only have the centennial edition the commemorative set the big cards and then the team cards I also have one mini sized uh, right away it's mid deck that is in the, the centennial but I carry it in my purse but well the images is the same but then I do have actually five standard right away it's made decks and for me I like the coloring on this edition I like it more subtle then one of my right away it's made decks is the Pam's Vintage Tarot it is a smaller card size but it's still not the mini deck I edged mine like this old brown style that fits perfectly on the worn and torn design of the on on Pixie's art that's been done here on top of it. But this deck uh it's a bit plasticky the quality but I still do prefer it as my favorite right away at Smith it isn't as nice to handle as the Centennial Edition but I like that it looks so old and worn then yet another indie deck uh, the Venetian Tarot by Eugene Vinitsky. I actually have two sizes of this one. I do have the full reviews on both of them. The small size, the carrion size, and then the standard, but I do have a separate video on it. This deck, it has a gorgeous old looking blue backs and the gilded edges. But my favorite thing about this Venetian tarot deck is the light. The light that shines in the images. It just pours out there.
it isn't just standard right away smith even though it kind of is going going that way but it's still a bit bit different but i like the i really love the images the cardstock is quite glossy and and a bit slippery let's see how it ages but a really nice deck this one i bought from uh from etsy but i do have a longer video on this but I then if somebody new starting on a tarot that wants something a bit different than pixie's artwork on right away it's made images one good one good idea for that is the Thelma Tharo. Once again, edged it in green. Even though the images they are not, you know, exact right away it's made, but it's really, really, really clear and almost almost anybody even though a beginner would recognize the pictures easily by just looking them not maybe my favorite art style but I don't know haven't been using it a lot but a little still you know on the face of studying and getting to know this deck. Sometimes I do buy decks that I think my daughter would like. She's 12 and we actually have one one indie deck coming to us that we backed on Kickstarter and it's taking it's taking a while to come but it's it's coming and I'll make a video when it's coming but my daughter is waiting for that. But the Tarot of the Magical Forest is one that I bought thinking of my daughter. I have trimmed my, this is the first deck I actually trimmed and I edged it like this dark pink. Most of the edgings that I see on the Magical Forest is, is done with green, which is rational, but I wanted mine to look a bit different. It's a cute right away it's made style animal deck. Maybe a bit too cute for my, my usual taste. But I thought this was a great deck, you know, try to work on my deck modification skills. It's a good deck to edge. Many people have uh, have uh, modified it, edged it, so. I have read it with a few times. It's cute. But not, not one of my most used decks. Then this deck, the the Golden Universal Tarot, I bought it when I was just starting to get get into tarot. I have hadn't been studying the decks a lot and didn't know what to expect and what I would like. I bought this one yet again, one that I've edged black. And and this deck. It has the gold foiling and gold details. I do like that. It's nice to shuffle, nice to use. But I actually found out I have two, two universal uh, white decks. I'll show you the other one soon. But I don't like the art style in these ones. There's something in the faces of the people that bothers me. It is easy to read right away to Smith style. But... And the deck is pretty, like, technically it's pretty, but something in the face of the people just puts me off a bit. So I don't tend to use this one so much. I try to sometimes, but after buying these two decks, these uh, universals, I I won't be buying these anymore because I don't like the art style. The other one that I have 
is the professional edition of it, this, the Love Scarabea version. I thought that I would like to use these as study, as a study deck. Oh, there's a drawing of my daughters. Here are the backs of the cards, and they are huge. It's bigger than my whole palm. Totally impossible to shuffle. I haven't, you know, yet been able to shuffle this deck. I don't think you're supposed to. Uh, I think it is a good study deck. The images are big and and you can see a lot of the details. But the fact that it's the the universal tarot, I I don't like as I just said the artwork. I don't know how long I'll be keeping this in my collection. Probably sell it at some point. Then we can jump into decks that I still need to study. I just bought this, the New Era Elements Tarot, a few days ago. I like the US game card stock. The deck is easy to handle. I like it. I'm going to be edging it uh, with this type of uh, brown gray color also. My daughter will be bringing me the pen today from her school. She helps mommy to edge decks by providing me with pens. This deck is, it uses a lot the Toth, Toth system that I'm not so used, uh, used to working with. Uh, this deck will need, need to be studied a bit more. I have done few readings with it and they weren't very very kind so let's see but the deck the the art style and the whole idea behind this deck it is a very very you know dark and intense deck with some quite brilliant card ideas like the the seven of cups there but this one I, I like the the court cards a lot. Something to study. That was the new era elements. Then for the last last four decks are my old classical tarot decks that I just bought for for study purposes and getting to know the history and but not for reading purposes. This is one of my uh, newest purchases, the Tarocconio Classico Italiano. Uh, it's from 1980s, this version, and I just bought it uh, on my work trip to Barcelona. This one is a, a limited edition for 1,500 copies, and mine is number 654. This deck uh, is a pip deck. I have been reading a bit with pips. I'm not totally fluent with that yet, being a newbie and also, but at least with these decks I can practice and get more familiar with them. There's the fool, the magician, the high priestess. Empress and Emperor, and so on. But the style is... The style of these cards is really old and, and the art style is beautiful. Just show you a few examples on the pips. The batons and the swords. There we have the cups. There we have the coins. And there we have the coins. It's a very squared, on the uh, hard on the edges, and the cards, they are old, so they are a bit bent. And that's the backing. But it's a beautiful deck. So the story behind this deck, uh, 
I, this is the Il Meneghello version of the Visconti Sforza Tarot. I was doing, packing my house because I was moving and I was listening the the novel, uh, the Tarot Cipher, and the whole book evolves around this. It's like a treasure hunt with the Visconti Sforza cards. If you haven't read the book or, or listened it on the audiobooks, you should. It's a really, really good book. Good, good tarot fantasy book. But so I ordered the Visconti Sforza just for just for the sake of the history and everything. The thing that I've been watching a, a lot of the videos around this this deck. I think the Ilmenagello version is the most unclear. The, the things that are on the brown or the golden blends in. So it's really hard to see if it is a cup or a coin or what is what is it on the brown on the brown background on top of it. I've seen other other decks that are not as you know old world feel as these Ilmenagellos, but they are a lot clearer if you really want to read with this deck. I don't. I just want, wanted to have it, to look at it, to study it and read about it. So for me, it's, as you see here, on the Empress's shield, it just, it blends on the body. That's what I mean. And there you, you don't see the, uh, the dress on this guy on top of the wheel. It just, it blends on the background. For me, that's, if I would be reading with this, would be a, a bit of an issue. Then I bought another Il Menegello deck. It's the Tarocchi Visconti di Modrone. Yet again for the study and historical purposes of it. And I like the, the box on this one. Il Menegello, they, they do great work. I don't think these decks are primarily practical for using for readings, etc. But beautiful decks, pieces of art. Here are the backs on this one. And the cards are big. They aren't as big as the the Universal Tarot Professional Edition that I showed, but they are big. But I don't care on the shuffling part with this because I'm not gonna shuffle this thing. I think compared to the Visconti Sforza, this is a bit clearer on the image. Even though still here you see the, the coin or the pentacle blending into the background. But when you look at it off camera, it's a bit more easy to see. This deck, it has a lot more into it uh, on the art than the Visconti Sforza. But this deck isn't a full 78 card deck. So even if you, if you would buy this, just know it has only 67 cards. Rest of them have been lost during times and they haven't been recreating those as they did with the Visconti Sforza. Then off to my last study deck, the big boy Sola Busca Tarot. I bought this in from Barcelona. I hadn't been watching any videos of the deck or anything but the lady in the shop just kind of sold this to me. I don't know. I was like okay I'll try but Oh boy, was I, you know, puzzled when I, when I really started to look at the images. I hadn't been familiarizing or anything with this deck. There are the backs. This is the Los Garbeo Museum 
edition version. It came with pure pure white borders and I edged it with this old brown paper looking color because I think it matches perfectly on the borders on the front. But this deck is it's his whole own universe. Total mystery to me. Quite brutal images. I was like, I don't have the slightest clue if I would be supposed to, you know, just shuffle it and read it. I was like, no can do. I haven't even read the companion book yet. Because it is the Los Carabeo book, it just has a small part in English and a lot of different languages too. So I, I, I went to Google and started to check out how to, you know, I watched some YouTube videos about people using this deck and how are they using it and whatnot. And then I found out about the... Uh, the game of Saturn book. So uh, now I have this monstrous book. It is huge and it, it is heavy. And it's filled with these great full color images. Let's see whenever I have the time to to read it and to study the deck. But at least now I do have it when I have the urge to do it. So that was my collection so far. I still have a few decks coming on the, uh, on the on the post. I have coming the Darkness of the Light and then the Pagan Other Worlds still on their way, but they are coming. But those are the decks that I do have now that I, and that I use. Yeah, so. There is my big messy pile of the decks after going through them with you. Thanks for watching and hope to see you some other, other time here too. Bye!